So it means that most people who actually want to do that skill earlier on are getting it from other places. I mean, yeah. I guess that comes into the next part of the, the discussion would be um, actual education instead of preparing you for a job, actual learning. Like, how yeah. is that going to change with the advent of, well, I guess, the singularity and well, the change online? I mean, it kind of already has. It's diff there's no formal... Well, th there can't be, though, because it's about an individual learning whatever they want. But then how do you test that? Well, you, well, let's say you can't. Like, let's remove all testing. Let's remove all of that. Actual education. And I mean, I, I, I know myself, at least, yeah. I've been raised a lot on forums and along the web. Like, I grew up with the web. Yeah, we've said before, we've, we've, we've probably yeah. learnt more sort of yeah. knowledge on, from, the yeah. from the web than we have from actual standardized education. education. Yeah. yeah. And well, it's just going to get further and further with that. Then I mean, imagine now that I, like when I was growing up and I was very interested, like getting into back into maths and all that other stuff. That yeah. there were full Yale courses on there, like into into everything. Like the, this is just the beginning about how much universities have online and learning that way. Yeah. And that's even not an effective way. Like Khan Academy, I think, no, is no. far <laughs> far much more effective. But even that's just a beginning. And Khan Academy, I mean, fantastic. But even still, that I mean, it's still not. Yeah the best well yeah they need to they need to be like someone needs to be innovating this space like mm. entrepreneurs need to come up with platforms and ways to learn really effectively I haven't online. had many ideas with that have you had many ideas with that what could no. be an innovative idea and in actual getting people to learn not for an objective just for themselves for fun no yeah have it. well that, that's the beauty of the, again of the internet like mm. you have the ability to learn whatever you're interested in obviously our, our entire economy the way it's structured is there's a certain set of jobs and you have to, you know, pick one, essentially. Mm. That's how the system works. You have to pick a job, and then you have to pick a degree to fit that job. Mm. Which, I mean, the majority it's... of it you don't like. Like, I remember being forced to do accounting. Like, oh, mm. Jesus, manual accounting at our university. Utterly Fails. useless. Utterly useless. I am never going to use it. If I need an accountant, I'll hire a fucking accountant. Or I'd <laughs> just actually open up a computer program yeah. and say, these are my expenditures, these are the... Not manual, like lift manual, like and left and right. Yeah, very, very Debits, odd. credits. But it, it, it is, it's an old thing because, I mean, like universities, especially education, uh, are relentlessly slow, like uh, yeah. notoriously slow and actually changing. That, I mean, what we are starting to see, and I think that the change will happen is where the web is just so much better at it. And what, we've, what I've been hearing a lot about, just in the buzz around and just off, you know, just in yeah. forums, just around, just from news articles and stuff, that apparently the next big bubble is going to be the education bubble. That's going to happen in the burst. States. Like, we don't have that, luckily. Or well, yeah, without in, we're government supplied. Because they're inflated loans. And yeah, that, uh, so. in the States and all that, you're paying, like, say, well, I don't know, like $30,000 or something for a degree. Yeah. Whereas, you, or maybe more than that, I think, I'm not sure, with inflation and all of the increased stuff, but you're not getting the return on investment. Yeah. And especially because you need to add in that you're oh. giving up four years of your life. Because they're four years over in the States, not here. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, the, then, when the return on investment goes higher, it uh, goes lower than what you're actually paying, there's a bubble. And they're saying right now that there already is a bubble. Yeah, because they treat it like a financial instrument over there. Oh, very like much so. Like, like an actual, you, you're investing in this student's future. Yeah, and what you invest in yourself, you take out a massive loan yeah. to actually get through those four years. When you get out, uh, I was speaking to someone from America today, and he was saying that, yeah, within six months, you've got to start paying it back. Fuck that. I mean, that's like just straight away job and straight away indentured slavery, yeah. essentially. Right? Whereas here, what, what's our loans? Like 20, 30? Oh, it's it's, it's for, roughly similar, I think, but we don't have to pay it, it back until... Yeah, the government covers it. There's no interest. It just uh, goes just up with inflation. inflation. Yeah, we don't have to pay it back until we earn a certain amount. Yeah. So, which is not bad. Like, I mean, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing right now if we were probably in the States, no. unfortunately. So... Yeah. Mm. Where, where do we think it's like I, I think there's there's probably a good potential that all universities around the world will probably just become very obsolete in the next decade I don't know I, I, I disagree with that I don't think they'll become obsolete I think they'll be still become meeting points for people but I think the classes okay. and stuff are going to be a lot more social Online. and collaborative that I think that the big maybe the big app is going to be the thing that unites the class together with other classes studying the same thing right. and so yeah. What, yeah so what you do is you say in your tutorial or something you have 30 people or a tutorial is just, you know, class other outside of a lecture. You have 30 people all there discussing and all of your ideas, but you do it online with, say, everyone else who's doing a similar course around. So you have, like, maybe 500 people around the world all yeah. learning the same thing as you at the same time. So I thought user-generated subjects. Yeah. But could, could you have a, a... Well, see, where the lecturers come in with that, though? 
or like the the experts because we can't discount wisdom in this or people you, you have done it. Maybe you could do like a, a you know how the group buying thing is so big at the moment. Mm, yeah. Maybe you have a whole group of people who are like, hey, here's a particular demand in the market. Um, like, oh, let's say brilliant. Let's say social media at the moment because uh, again, a nice easy one. It's, yeah. it's kind of it's new and a lot of universities are not doing yeah. it. But yeah, you have a demand for it. A group gets together and says, hey, we want to learn this. We're gonna Say they pay money, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Let's put some money well, in. You make it into your course. Group money, yeah. And then all those users say what they want to learn, mm. and then they go outsource and find the experts to teach them that. Or you, you do it with yeah. even like imagine that makes the Pulling actual the professors entrepreneurs as well because they think that say like yeah. someone who's an expert in nanotechnology, like you know, like cutting edge right now, they've discovered this new thing, and and then a lot of students get together, say like you know the Groupon system, you get thirty students all together saying yeah. we'd love for you to teach us as a course and. We just want a rough idea because the actual mm, okay. degree, yeah. yeah, not not as important, I don't think, as the classes are going to be, maybe. Yeah. Well, actually, the, the Genesis project, that guy, mm. one of his ideas he had was you could essentially set up a pyramid system with teaching, but mm. it doesn't fail because unlike money where you run out, knowledge and innovation is it's perpetual. perpetual. So what he was saying is what you do is, as a teacher, what oh. teachers could do is forego any um, payment in return for equity in their students' future. That, mm, you know what I mean? That's so, kind of cool. So they, they teach their students a particular skill or whatever, like particular knowledge, and have an equity stake in some kind of... I love that I idea. Know, I have it's, no idea how you work it out. I mean, the gaming would be ridiculous. You'd have to yeah. work that out somehow. But if that could be worked out, that'd be fantastic. Because that could spread to everyone. I mean, everyone I mean, teaches everyone. And how great course. would that be that like you just say that you, you have like a group of students you want to just impact as much as possible because if they start yeah. making money really well off you some of your money. ideas, yeah, it comes back. Yeah. So you get rewarded for positive teaching. Yeah. That's a good idea. I never That's considered cool. that. I mean, the, the gaming is going to be ridiculous. I mean, it is a pyramid scheme, but the gaming could be yeah. beaten, I think. But it, well, his justification was innovation has no... Yeah. Like, the, the, there's no, unlike yeah. with money at the bottom where it you know, yeah. fitters out and everyone fails yeah. at the bottom. You know, This is okay because it's gross. perpetually. Like, yeah. even if you get to the bottom, it's still fine because there'll be new people coming along. You still want to... Yeah. S and by that point, I mean, the knowledge is probably going to be obsolete anyway. Yeah. I mean, you just restart it. Yeah, you, restart, <laughs> you, you do a new idea. Yeah. Brilliant. So, what do we? So we, we think that um, it's eventually going to be a people will learn essentially what they want to learn, what they mm. what they love to do, what they're interested. I, in. I think that's already happening now. I think. Which I is think that's what a big part. People should have been doing in the first place. Well, I think they were, but I mean, it was just very much like how you said before to get a job. You've got that you you picked what job you'd like to do, and, and then, then you options. follow the degree path. And I guess after the singularity and all of that, it's going to be very much... Um, the well, after that point, matter. No. Well, <laughs> uh, I, no I, I, I disagree. I, I still think that probably after the singularity, you'll just be presented with things that you'd like to learn. And then based on what you've learned, it provides yeah. jobs to you. provides all of that. Posting that, there's no jobs. There's no need for it. Oh, of course there is. Of course there is. There's still ways that you actually actually work and there's things you do. Because, I mean, you, you don't get happiness by doing nothing. We have a different idea of post singularity. <laughs> you, 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 don't, you don't think you'll be learning new things after singularity? You think will, you're just going to die? No, no, I will, but I will just be part of the rest of the hive and knowledge will be transferred but, but how, instantly. How, yeah, I will say Anytime you could say brain is, back and forth, but there'd still be a way yeah. to actually, you'd be learning new things, I think, at some point. I mean, even the, the brain connection thing is pre singularity where any time mm -hmm. a neuron fires in any brain can spark any other neural firing in any other brain. Oh, not, not, not necessarily. Well, I, I guess it depends where you actually call a singularity and stuff. But well, you could yeah. say before brain interface uh, that I think that would be that you'd just be say all of the stuff that you've learned and then you'd be asked to provide jobs based on it. And then maybe post singularity when you've got all the brain mesh. I'm not sure about that. But let's say before the brain interface. I think, yeah. I don't know, well, at least that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. So yeah, cool. freelance entrepreneurship is the way. Universities mm. are decaying. The idea of jobs are decaying. I mean, everyone's going to be essentially their own entrepreneur, their own corporation with their own skill set. The question is, how do we? We need an automatic system, like a an algorithm that actually works out. Here's what your skills are. Here's someone that needs them. Mm, exactly. That, yeah, the question I, I asked way back when we first started this was, okay, you have a particular demand for a skill. Mm. How do you determine this person has a skill without a qualification? Yeah. Then how do you determine that qualification? Like, do you just, if you want a particular, a demand for a particular skill, do you just send out a test and say, anyone who answers this best, you no, know, gets a job? That, that, that probably wouldn't 
but yeah, you couldn't yeah. do that. It'd just have to be that I think based on well, I, I'm not sure based on. It'd just have to be a web because a test social game. I guess social vetting. Yeah, you do yeah, like an eBay like model, like you know, hmm. only trust the people with the most <laughs> ratings. But then and the, whoever works this out <laughs> is going to make trillions. Yeah. Anyway, Yay. sweet. I think we've uh, covered it pretty well. Awesome. Cool, guys. Catch you guys next week. Yeah, this has been High Forty Five. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. Catch you next time. You're a really bad smiling. Yeesh. <laughs> mm.